What's up? It's Christine Horn, the Booking Magnet. Welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. Oh, because we all have something magical within us. And this young lady who I'm interviewing today is filled with magic and gems and jewels and talent. Her name is Crystal Lee Brown. She's an Emmy nominated actress, audition coach, and self tape specialist. She's also my friend, <laughs> which I'm so excited to have you all meet her. She's an on set dialogue coach for network television shows, and she's landed roles on Showtime, Stars, Netflix, HBO, ABC, CBS, CNC, and the CW, and including tons of commercials. She was just in the Super Bowl commercial with Mary J. Blige. She was pretend she was being her um her makeup artist, honey. But on top of that, she had a show-stopping performance in Showtime's The Good Lord Bird. If you didn't see it, watch it. And if you saw it already and you now that you see who Crystal is, you're gonna want to go back and rewatch it. So enjoy this interview with Crystal Lee Brown. We start to tug on the heartstrings a little bit because you know that's what friends do, but she dropped so many gems. So I think you're really gonna enjoy this show. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Crystal Hi. Crystal. Hi. <laughs> you know it's special when I'm singing your name, girl. <laughs> Hi, honey. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so good. You look so beautiful. We, you haven't, we haven't seen each other physically in a minute. So this I is like a, a, a real treat. I know. I know. Man, Crystal Lee Brown. You know, it's been such a pleasure to watch you on my screen over the years since I've had a chance to meet. We met in LA when I moved to LA 2017, 2018. And just watching you grow and evolve and step into juicier roles, more recurring things, showing your range from sassy girlfriends to like gut-wrenching drama. It's so fun to watch. For those who don't know you, haven't had a chance to get to know you yet, how did you get started in I'm, I was going to say acting. I asked someone else in entertainment and some, some people say, well, entertainment is like the business. And that was later, but I started acting at this age. So tell me about your journey into acting. Cause I know you're, you got a story there to share. Yes, for sure. Well, my introduction to the arts was through my mother. Every Sunday we used to watch uh, the Sunday matinee movies when I was a little girl. And that's when I first was introduced to imitation of life. Mm. It's a mad, 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 mad world. Merle Street and Silkworm, Denzel and the McKinnon, the George McKinnon story. Before mm. these people were even named, this was in the 80s that I was watching movies. And I really didn't understand what I was watching or obviously what the craft was, but the storytelling was so prevalent. The Bad Seed, that's another one. Ooh, that me on too. That with my mother, oh, all the original, I right? So yeah. I was watching these as a kid and I was mesmerized by the storytelling. I, I didn't, I couldn't decipher. I didn't know that it wasn't real. I didn't know that it was, you know, this was a craft that these people were doing. I was just so enthralled in the story. So every Sunday, I was just so excited to get introduced to something new. And we're talking about old school movies, yeah. right? Dated movies that my mom grew up watching as, as a child. So that is my, that was my first introduction to the arts and to acting and what it was. And obviously, you know, grew up watching all the great shows that, you know, I know we both grew up watching, but that was the beginning of, okay, this is an art form. They are telling stories that are wow, beyond my imagination as a child, but I'm interested. I want to do that. I want, I want, I need more of that in my yeah. life. So that's how, that was the first introduction that um, inspired me to pursue acting and, and, you know, this craft. And again, still as a young age, didn't really, didn't really understand that, oh, you have to study this thing. Oh, there's a whole lot to this. Oh, there's lights, there's cameras, there's, there's a whole, this is a production. And you know, I started asking my mom to enroll me in community theater. I'm born and raised in Philadelphia. So Freedom Theater is a huge historically Black known theater in Philadelphia that a lot of great artists um, came from. So she enrolled me in Freedom Theater. Um, there's a story behind that because I had to audition and I was petrified. Oh, no. And I was a young girl. I think it was $20 to enroll to audition. And I had to sing a few bars and do a couple lines of monologue and something, a dance. And I was like, 
I don't want to do it. <laughs> and I did not go to my audition that day. Do you know that? I, told oh, I was wow. so afraid. And my mom was like, but I spent the $20. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back in the 80s, like, that was funny. That was the point, yeah. Yes. So, but that was the first time that I allowed fear to enter. That was my first feeling of fear when it came to this industry now that I know is the industry. Um, but I allowed that to stop me from auditioning because I was like, that was the first moment of like, I'm not good enough. What if I don't get in? I shouldn't even have been thinking that way as a child, but it innately just happened. And then I got over that. And then, you know, we went to another um, theater company and I started doing community theater. And in school, I will always be the first to volunteer to uh, be in the play. But um, that moment sticks with me even now. So I'm reminded of that moment when fear creeps in, you know, when doubt creeps in because we're human and it happens. Um, but I, I remind myself of the little girl then and had I known what I know now, right? Uh, that hindsight. <laughs> right. Um, so, but it was a learning lesson for me. And, and, and I, it's good that I can remind myself of that feeling so I know how to push through that. Yeah. So you started doing the community theater. And when, like, when did that transition into... Like, when, did you keep doing it like in in high school? And did you go to did you go to college for for? Yes, I went to Temple University. Um, however, my major was sports journalism, bro, uh, broadcast journalism, uh, public relations, and advertising. So that's what my degree is in. But my minor was theater. So I was doing taking acting classes and voice and movement classes and theater classes as a minor um, to my to my main degree. And that's when it started. Like, okay okay, this is what we're doing. I'm going to do this. Yeah. Even though my dream job was always to be a sports uh, journalist. And I did work in that field before I decided to leave that field to pursue my dreams as an actor. That's so interesting. I don't know if you know this about me. I was, I got accepted to Columbia U University by now, those watching this podcast have heard the story, but I got accepted to Columbia for print journalism. I was going to go because I loved writing. I, loved, I used to write for the newspapers. Yes. The newspapers. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a journalist. That was my, that was what I was going Look to do. That. And it's funny because I use that skill still now in writing. I used to write bios for people and, you know, help my daughter with her, her, you know, her assignments. I'm like, oh, let, I have a degree in this journalism thing. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. You did. I got you. <laughs> yeah. But when I graduated from college, I moved to New York. And I was working for the National Basketball Association at the time, but I was doing off, off, way off Broadway uh, theater for um, the uh, Brooklyn Repertory uh, Theater Company. Oh, so I love that. So from sports journalist to feeling the feeling the bug, the bug kept tugging. And well, here we are. The rest, the rest is kind of history. Yes, yes. When you were younger, though. And you talk, I want to go back a bit to when you were sharing about watching Meryl Streep, young Denzel, young Meryl, like, what was it, aside from them being great movies and great actors, what drew you to, to these performances and to the, to the people that you, like, you couldn't keep your eyes off of? What was it about them? Yeah, it was the vulnerability and mm -hmm. confidence. And mind you, this is... Merle in her 20s, not named Merle, not named Denzel. So I had no clue who they were just young actors grinding, what, what I know now, right, of their career. But when I was watching them, it was this essence of confidence. And they were so in tune with their emotions, both of the movies, um, Silkwood and um, uh, the George McKinnon story was just a heart-wrenching story for both of them to tell. So there was so much depth and vulnerability in their performances that I was, I mean, I was crying. I was like, oh my God, mom, what's going to happen? I don't, you know, I cared for them so much. They, they allowed me to care for them as a child and really just express my emotions because I wanted them to win. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so that was what I was attracted to and what they brought to the screen having no idea that they were going to be who they are today, but it was that. It definitely was that. And I and, wanted more of that. And do you feel like you've been able to 
bring some of that to your work? Does, do you feel that for yourself? Absolutely. 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 I've, I've over the years gone back to watch their full body of work, right? So much, right? I'm like, okay, what am I going to watch today? But just seeing their growth as an artist, mm-hmm. right? I'm um, seeing how their storytelling technique has changed and their openness and their secrets, right? As I'm watching, I can see the growth in their craft, which I'm like, oh my goodness. I remember 20 years ago, I watched him and that, and that wasn't there, yeah. right? And now to see it so refined and so you can't even spot it, right? I, I like to say, you know, you can't spot the work. They don't want to, you know, let them not spot the work. Um, and it's flawless. It's seamless. Yeah, I think there's there's such power when you, especially when you are already an artist, like, and you still get sucked in. Like when I, when you still suck me in and I, and I stop looking at, the set and the hair and the wigs and the like, and I'm just like, that is, yes. you got me, you got me locked in. Yes. I love that. That's, and you make, you're going to make me go back and watch those movies again now. And so it is so interesting to see just how things have changed in the industry as far as like uh, special effects or the way editing was done, music, oh, um, even no. the way like continuity, <laughs> right? <laughs> All of it. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Person's on that arm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you when you think about the work that you that you have done, what what paid job was it? Specifically, what paid gig was it for you that proved to you I'm good at this? Man, you're gonna make me cry. Um, I would have to say my role as Sabonia in the Good Lord Bird. Ooh, that was so juicy. That was juicy. So what, was it a moment on set? Was it when you watched it back? Was, when did you feel that? You know, I felt it on set, a a magical thing happened on set, which I haven't shared with a lot of people. Um, But the prep was one part of it, right? Like really having to strip myself down and we do this for every role to you know take on a character but this was something very very specific it was something real truthful based off of a you know a true story which i didn't find out that sabonia's story was accounted for i didn't know that this was an actual documented story and i didn't find that out until my last day of shooting from the writer james mcbride who wrote the book and it hit me like a ton of bricks because in my mind, it was a real story. This happened, but to get confirmation that this is only one of the stories that we will ever hear about when it comes to enslavement and our ancestors, you know, and what they endured. um, It, it really resonated with me on a level that it took on a whole new, just weight and depth of it for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was the moment of just getting lost in the moment of on set. And I remember after we shot the, um, the preacher scene, I heard cut, right. I heard it. And, but I still was in it. I still was, was in the space, but it was so quiet on set. And we had like 150 people, you know, normally it's cut, things start moving, all that. And no one, it was just. And I thought it was me. I said, okay, well, maybe people are moving and I'm just still sitting here. So after about 30 seconds, I said, well, let me, let me get up. And I went to get up and the first AD comes walking slowly over to me and his face is red and his eyes are watery and I'm like, what happened? And he just looked at me and he said, Crystal Lee Brown, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in the room stood up Mm. and gave me a standing ovation. And I was- oh, Girl, I got chills. That just gave me chills. I was like, I was so still in it and unaware and just did not know what was happening. And all I could muster was thank you. Like I didn't, you know, that doesn't happen. So I was just, it was just an out-of-body experience. And then, you know, they were going to turn the cameras around. So uh, me and Alex, who plays the preacher, was walking outside and it was hot. It's like 120 degrees on. I got, you know, this wardrobe on. And 
As I walk down the steps, Alex gently placed his hand on my shoulder and I collapsed. I literally fell to my knees and wept. And for me, it wasn't crystal, right? It was the emotion and the release from what the circumstance was in the scene. Um, but I wept uncontrollably. And to the point where I forgot that I was like on set, like I was, and I heard someone say, give her space because it was just so heavy. Yeah. It was the week of 16, 19. We're actually on a plantation. Like it was all, that, all that energy, the all energy. that energy was there. And um, after like 45 seconds, I, you know, got up and I remember someone called my name and I turned around and they took a picture. And I keep saying year after year, I'm going to post this picture and then tell the story. But um, I, I needed five more minutes to continue to weep. And graciously, I was given the time that I needed and to go back to show up for my scene partner on the other end. Um, but to answer your question, I think that was the first time for me as a paid actor that I just allowed myself a, a thousand percent right? A thousand percent to just stay open. Yeah. You know, I think there's those moments where, you know, there's so much stuff happening and we have to reset and do all the things. Um, but, and it's hard sometimes to like drop back in and come back out and, and all of that stuff that just happens. But I think that was the first time for me that I was like, okay. Yeah. You step, you stepped in. Stepped you know, in. Was, yeah. Stepped yeah. In. yeah. Yeah. I don't know for how it is for you, but for me, acting is so, it's so spiritual. You know, a lot of times I do that exercise where you, I peel myself off and I'll step into someone else and to honor, to honor them and to honor their truth. And like you said, even after all this was done and then you find out it was really based off somebody like you were bringing truth to her period. But then to period. find out on top of it, it's like a whole nother level of stuff. And I just, that moment, and you talking about where you were, the history, like I, I probably would have just, but it would have been just like, just like you, yeah. girl. Like, it's because it's, and to tell it just, you weren't trying to put on a performance. It was no. just, you were just in the world of this person. And I think for those of you listening and or watching this, the challenge often, I know you can relate to this, is so many times, even when we're doing auditions or on set, we can be outside of ourselves, judging ourselves, trying to, did I do that right? What's going on? Did I do that? Mm -hmm. And the, the freedom and the beauty when you can just fully immerse in what's, you know, you, you the, the technique is all in you. Yes. But that's not the sole focus in For that sure. moment. Absolutely. And, and I had, it was to the point where I didn't remember anything. I did not remember anything. And when the show aired, I was scared to watch. I was like, I don't, don't want to watch it. Y'all watch it y'all watch it. Y'all let me know. <laughs> what did what they end up with? I don't, I, don't know. Know. I, don't, I don't know. And when I watched it, I couldn't take my, I, it was, it was the, it was just all there. And because I don't remember it, because it was literally a blur, because I was so immersed and they were watching it. I was like, I literally was just watching like, and could not remember a moment of it. Wow. Like literally could not remember because everything was just so impactful. And I was just, and, and I, re, and I remember in my prep, just asking Sabonia for, to, to use me. Mm -hmm. Right. And I still would speak to her and she she still holds a special place in my heart. But I would I would ask for that space and for that grace for her to allow me to um, use be be the voice for her. When I played Harriet Tubman, I did that. I kept mm -hmm. asking for guidance. Yes. I kept asking for guidance and for permission. And honey, I was looking at every star I could. Every everything was a sign. Oh, yes. you say her? <laughs> Seriously, I was I just felt so connected. Yes. To and most of the stuff we shot when I, it was a show called Timeless, for those of you who hadn't seen it, a lot of, it, a lot of it was shot outside. So I just felt so connected to nature and to, mm -hmm. so, ooh, talking my language. Yes. Yes. You know? it's, like you said, it's a spiritual thing, especially when we call on, um, you know, those, those, those powerful beings that we know still surround us. Yeah. It's magical.
Oh, that's such a great story. <laughs> so and so my, my my brain is went back to that time. Like imagine if I was a fly on the wall. You've done a lot of things, a lot of beautiful work. What do you know for sure is your magical superpower? What when you what do you know that you uniquely bring? What do you know that makes you magnetic when you step into a room or on a set or anywhere? What is that thing for Crystal? I believe it's my authenticity, which took a long time for me to appreciate and value, right? Um, I know me being from Philadelphia, listen, I, I like to break out into the, <laughs> the <laughs> Fresh Prince of Bel Air theme song, right? Like, listen, I'm from Philly, born and raised, right? We're going to keep it straight with you. We're going to keep it straight. Right? And, you know, there's a balance of like, how much I used to feel that people can digest right when it's all <laughs> you know you know what I mean so mm -hmm. but I think because I have that because I'm real honest loyal to a fault and just 100 up and down authentic I don't I can't do the other thing I don't know how to fold and you know allow myself to be less than I tried it I have done it. <laughs> it doesn't feel work good for me. <laughs> it doesn't work for me. Um, so I think because I can just be who I am and 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 live truthfully in that and be okay with, yes, I'm from Philly. Yes, I may say water differently than you or whatever it is. Um, I bring that. I bring that essence of just truth and real. And I think that's just what people want, you know, especially living out in LA, you know, there's, um, uh, Tabitha Brown just posted a video yesterday about how she used to not speak in her native tongue, you know, in terms of her Southern accent, because she was in Hollywood and how that felt. And it resonated with me so much. And I was like, yes, I think we've all done it, but it's, I can't, I, I was like, I no, this worked for about two weeks. <laughs> 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 and we have to retire that whole way. So, this don't work for me. Um, so yeah, so knowing that I can just be me authentically, I think um, works for me. And that's my superpower. You know, and each and every one of you who are watching or listening to this know that you too have something that makes you so uniquely special. You know, so, so many times in this industry, we hear people say, oh, bring yourself. But if you don't know, if you're not tapped into what that is and if you're trying to hide it or become someone else or act as someone else, it's hard to be authentic in your own shoes. And in case you're thinking, I don't know, what the, I want to stand out, Crystal. I want my audition to be to be different. You know, I'm always like, you don't got to reinvent the wheel, right? Just put some rims on it. And guess what? You are the rims. You show you just right now is going to make any audition different because this, you're only one of a kind, you know? I just want to encourage you. That's why everybody I've been talking to for this series, I asked that question because there is something. If you don't know what that something is for you, I invite you to go, go within and hey, maybe ask people that are close to you what they think it is because you might get your answer that way too. <laughs> <laughs> like, girl, let me tell you the truth. Right. <laughs> but I see. It's what I know for sure. Right. <laughs> you know, look, Crystal, you work a lot. You know, I tell, I, tell, I tell a lot of people, like some of the students I mentor, I say, look, I book a lot, but I don't book a lot. I audition a whole lot. I don't book. Oh, I Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're gonna spend two days surrounded with actors oh, just like you. Actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. So let's talk, you know, about the ebbs and flows of this industry. I know it's easy to see red carpet. It's easy to hear Crystal talk about, you know, epic performances on television and in film. But 
that's not 24 seven. It's not that way, you know, every single day, every opportunity, the roles you get, roles you don't get. How do you deal? How, how do you deal? How have you dealt? Did you deal with it a certain way when you were younger that maybe you found wasn't so helpful and now you've readjusted? Like, how do you deal with the ebb and flow and the emotional roller coaster that is this career? Yes, for sure. You know, I've been in LA 17 years. And when I got here, I was 27. I'm telling my age. Um, I was young. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm in LA. Where is the party? Where do all the cool people hang out? All of that. Um, and I quickly realized that I was wasting time. So once I got my bearings together and got that out of my system, um, I was able to really focus on why did I leave my family and move 3,000 miles to come here to pursue what I call my dream. And it was a, a, the first five years in LA was rough. You know, I, I, I didn't know the business, right? Mm -hmm. I knew out here knowing like, oh, I, I can act and all my friends and family thinks I'm great, but I moved out here and I was pantomiming, throwing keys and audition. It was crazy. I mean, you know, <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> um, so, you know, I immediately, you know, got in class and I have always been in class since I think the first year I moved to LA, I had all, I have always been in class. Um, but in terms of the ebbs and flows, I just had to find the flow that worked for me. And in the 17 years that I've been here, I've gotten married. I have an 11 year old daughter, right? So I, I never stopped, right? Even though these life events happen, I allowed these life events to strengthen me, to push me even further on why I have to go out and follow my dreams, right? And, you know, I know a lot of people come out here to do that. And after a certain time, it's not sustainable for them, right? And they find themselves moving back home or choosing another path. But for me, even when the nose and the, I still get nose, we, we get nose, right? Um, was when it was coming in like constantly because I hadn't booked in years. I was like, wow, what am I doing wrong? You know, what am I doing? What do I need to adjust? What do I need to focus on that's going to take me to the next level so I can get out of this, this no cycle? cycle. <laughs> this no cycle, which strengthened me as an artist because it allowed me to say, oh, I need to work on this. Oh, I need to learn that. This is where, you know, watching back, uh, this is before really self tapes took off. So yeah. I didn't have anything to watch and to see. So being in class and getting that feedback and working with other artists allowed me to grow and really see what my thing was. Like you like, you like to say your isms, girl, mm. I had a whole lot of isms. <laughs> <laughs> So you and me both. Like, oh, okay. Um, but you know, I just allow the nose to they hurt, right? Yeah. Especially when um, you know, I was seeing so many, not really of my peers, but just people working constantly. And now my peers who I moved out here with are like everyone series regular, got their own show. So my generation of artists that came out here has been through that mutt you know, that dirt, that grimy journey, but all for where we are now. So, mm -hmm. you know, I just take it one day at a time. I always act with self-regard and knowing that I need to, to deal and handle my emotions and my feelings about everything on a professional level. And if I'm hurting about something, then I'm allowing myself to hurt. If I'm joyous about something, then I'm going to do that. But I'm always going to cheer for my peers as well. Um, so that allows me to keep going because I'm like, oh, we used to work at the same job together. Now, oh, it's already. I like to say when God blesses your neighbor, that just means he's in the neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, my neighbor like right here. Proximity. Like, oh, <laughs> I can smell you, neighbor. Yes. Yes. Um, so that's just how I've been able to. And when I look back over it, I'm like, wow, it's been 17 years. How did I do that? I mean, even when I became a mother, I didn't allow that to stop me. I remember taking my daughter in a stroller to an audition, sleep, a couple months old, pushing the stroller back and forth, running into a friend. Hey, can you watch her? even taking her in the audition room with me and parking the stroller in the corner. And I said, well, I'm a mother first. 
And it was no problem, no crazy looks or anything like that. So if I can do that, <laughs> Girl, yeah. you know, I was like, it is what it is. This is, this is what I want. And I'm a mom and I'm going to bring truth of being a mom into this role. There's the proof. <laughs> oh, that's a whole word for somebody at home right now. I already know. Yeah. Because, I, you know, I hear that, you know, but it's the bus, but I'm this, but I have this going on, but I have that. And I feel like a determined spirit, like even if there's setbacks or moments, moments where things are slow and have, have to be readjusted, like don't lose sight of the vision. Don't lose sight of the focus, especially like you said, when you moved, <laughs> when you have left everything, like we do here to do this. Yes. You know, I think that's, oh, that's so good. You know, and I love that you talked about, you know, having jobs and doing what you need to do to support yourself and your family, because I meet some actors who I've I heard this recently from a, a, a client who's they're afraid of losing themselves. Like if I get a job, if I take this job that will yeah, sustain me and allow me to, will I lose myself? Will I lose the pursuit if I'm doing this job? And and what's on, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, I have thoughts about that because I I've always kept two three jobs. Like I I didn't believe in being a broke oh, a broke no. starving actor. Like I was like no, I like lights on and I like food in my fridge. I'm yes. a grown person. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> um, but what are your thoughts on that for people who just have that quiet fear of of doing anything else other than acting and fear of maybe I think what others may think. I mean, I think that's the the root of it. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, I, when I first moved here, I waited tables with a college degree, leaving the National Basketball Association, the Arena Football League, working in the field that I dreamt about my whole life. And I was waiting tables, bartending. I even started my own bartending company and do parties and have clients. And now I can outsource that now. Um, but that was my hustle. That is what I was doing. I even, and then after I did that, because at a certain point I was like, I can't do this anymore. Um, I, believe it or not, was delivering the mail. I don't remember taking the United States Postal Service test. I don't remember none of that. All I know is I was working for the post office. <laughs> So that's a whole story. That's a whole oh, how did that happen? But just to let you now, it didn't last. <laughs> Lord knows I wasn't cut out for that. Um, I did not pass probation, let's just say that. <laughs> that's another story. Uh, but um, but I remember going to where and my daughter was newborn. I mean, you know, just wasn't even a year old yet. And I remember like, okay, well, acting isn't picking up right now. I'm a mother, right? I have bills, all of that. So that was the reason why I was there. But I would drive to that post office every day, weeping. I could not even believe. I didn't even remember getting there. I was like, how did this happen? I know I didn't, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Now, granted, I was working because I needed to work, but I was like, how, where is the alignment in this? What am I supposed to learn? What am I supposed to see in this? One thing you do see, you see everything in the middle. <laughs> i tell you that. But <laughs> in, in things that I saw and I was like, oh, okay. I see that. Oh, okay. It was just little things and little signs that I would see on my, on my daily, you know, um, job that, was just little whispers and little reminders that this is just a stepping stone. This is, it really was, you're not even going to make it past probation. So, this so, is cute. This cute. You, you could try it, girl. You could use it. So, you, you need, you'll need that character's development for later. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody keeps saying, if you don't do a one woman show about this post office thing. <laughs> This is the first time I'm hearing this and I am thoroughly enjoying it. Okay. Yes, but um, what it made me feel was I know that this is not making me happy. Yeah. And I know, and I can see how some people get stuck in a position like this, mm -hmm. right? And this is not what my guy car carved out for me. 
However, this feeling that I'm feeling is pushing me to do everything that I have to do, stop the procrastination and all the other things that were hindering me from really going full throttle in my career. It made me see like, okay, now you're at a crossroad. What you going to do, boo? Baby, I didn't look back. <laughs> Needless oh. to say, I may I I I I make sure that every time I see the post person, I'm like, <laughs> all right. Bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so to answer the question, because now we talk and talking. Um <laughs> Sometimes you're there as a reminder, Mm. right? Of what you need to do to do what you want to do. Listen, any of y'all who following me, follow my story, got my book. Y'all know I'm transparent as hell about all the jobs I had, Mm -hmm. you know, and with no shame, but a daily reminder. Crystal, I don't know if you know this about me. I would play mind games with myself on the way to work. Mm. (laughs) And I, I don't. I would pretend that I was a famous. You know, how famous celebrities do charity work. Because uh-huh. <laughs> I worked for a nonprofit, and I'd be mm-hmm. like, "I'm gonna go donate my time again today." They are so sweet. They love to, they love to give me a stipend. They just love to show. It's like a, an honorarium to be there. Wow. I'm gonna give them. You know, I'm gonna go there for eight hours. It's just, it's really meaningful work because it was meaningful work. Mm-hmm. But I had to tell myself that, and I operated in that. Which I had some haters at the office. But like, who she think she is? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> As I filed, I love it. But listen, because we know oh, we what we're supposed to do. I didn't lose sight of that vision, and I didn't lose sight of what I knew I was meant to do. So I'm saying that those we're joking, but we're for real. If you're here, the real thing is we had the jobs. Yeah. That's real. But you got to do whatever you got to do. So th- that job you have right now may be the fire up under your butt to be like, if you're uncomfortable, that, you know, that's where a lot of change comes. Change will come from pain. That's when we start to really feel it and be like, this is uncomfortable. I don't want, I want, I don't want this to be my reality anymore. And that's what I'm hearing about this post office story yeah. is he was like, this ain't, this ain't for me. It's not for me. No but- shade to it. This is not for me. Yeah. You know? And it's meant, I'm meant for more. So it's hold, hold tight to the vision, y'all. Hold yeah. tight to the vision, you know, and use it. I, man, I got so much character development stuff. So many stories from people I've worked with and met. Can't <laughs> wait to use it. Oh, my gosh. We're getting ready to wrap. I do want to say this. this is just, <laughs> I'm so tickled by this story, Crystal. Girl. <laughs> I got to tell you the real story. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming me for lunch. I want to hear the rest of this story. <laughs> But for, for, you know, there are actors at home listening. Mm-hmm. So I want you to, for a moment, imagine the actor season, been in the game, maybe 15 plus years. Maybe they've reached a plateau or it's just been a really dry spell. And I want you to think about the new, the new actor who is, is got stars in their eyes, but feel lost and confused about where to start. And not, nothing seems to be working. And they may just want to, they're wondering, am I even good enough? Should I just quit? Like maybe I'm delusional for even trying this career out. What can you just, a word of wisdom, a word of love to speak to the the heart of these actors right now? You know, it's very, um, it's very, it's emotional for me because I get it. I've been there. I may be there again, right? Because this journey is up and down, but it is so rewarding to give yourself grace, to give yourself space if you need it, a break if you need it, time if you need it. But to know that as long as you get back on, right? As long as you jump back into the race, 
or your dream will meet your, your reality, right? Like it will, it will manifest itself for you because what you're saying to spirit, to God, to the universe is that you're not done Mm -hmm. and you are rewarded for that, right? You're rewarded. And I'm not saying those who quit whatever it is they're doing is not also rewarded, right? They're rewarded in a different way, in a different space, in a different career. But for the artists, right? We're so sensitive about our work, right? And so sensitive about this this career that we've chosen because it's not guaranteed. And I think the real question is, what are you looking, what is the guarantee that you're looking for, right? Um, it, It cannot be fame and fortune. Oh, please, God, no. Yeah. Right. Um, if that's if if that comes, great. If it doesn't, great. I look at so many phenomenal actors who are not household names, but if I turn on my television and I see that, I'm like, oh, they was in. Oh, he good. I mean, they don't need to be on the cover of my magazine or winning the shiny gold statue. They're amazing and they're fun to watch, and I learn from them. Right. So I think that fame and celebrity and all that cannot be the guarantee, cannot be the the thing that we're in this for. How does it make your soul feel? Right. What what service are you giving back to those who are voiceless, who don't have a voice? What story are you attaching yourself to? Right. Um, I also believe that the power of no, and I know I spoke about this before, right? Really understanding what is the trajectory of your career? What do you want it to look like? You can paint that. Mm-hmm. You can make that. Surround yourself with a tribe that can support you in that. Um, because I have not gotten where I am by myself. Me either. Not at all. Um, and, and I still allow myself to be surrounded by people who get it who understand that can help me when I'm in the rut. And then I can turn around and do the exact same thing for them when they're feeling down or inadequate in this journey. So I would just say, press on. I mean, all you have to, all you, all we can do is just continue to do what we're doing. And if it's not working, right. Then, okay. What do I need to do to make this work? Who do I need to reach out to? What, class or training or whatever it is that you know that you're missing, that you're lacking, that you need to add to your arsenal, to your tool bag, tool bag that's going to elevate you in this thing, opposed to, I'm not sure, I'm doubtful, I don't know, but what are you doing? Right. You know, faith without works is dead, so you still have to do the work. Yeah. You still have to do the work. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I hope y'all received that with all the love intended, <laughs> because that's so juicy. Yes. I love the giving ourselves grace, taking the breaks when we need to. And then what I'm hearing also is that reevaluate, you know, keep checking in, keep checking in with yourself about how you're feeling about all of it. And, you know, look at the data. But I believe if if this, if this calling is in your heart, is in your, like, it's not placed there for, by accident. You know what I mean? Like, so (laughs) I love, and I love how you said, look, I, I may be there again, like, who knows like it doesn't like i mean disappointments come in so many ways you know it's it could be for some people it's i haven't had an audition in six months or for some people it's i was it was down to me and one other person for this series regular and i didn't book it like and that's gut-wrenching and you just gotta sit in it and feel the feelings and digest and and then you make a decision do i get back up again or do i stay Absolutely. look how close you were Right. But it can be really easy to be like, maybe this isn't for me instead of seeing you were so close. So it's about perception also. Yeah. 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 Sure. Oh, Crystal Lee Brown. Y'all, no no fear. All of Crystal's links to all her socials um, will be in the show notes. Um, Crystal, thank you so much for sharing space and time with me. Thank you for pouring back to our community of artists. I'm so excited to keep keep watching your journey unfold and to keep, I, I learned so much from watching your performances and you make me want to go back and watch Good Lord Bird again. I mean, I saw it in real time, but now I'm like, with some of this extra stuff, I want to like dissect it a bit more um, just because that's fun for me to do. 
So thank you so much for this thank today. Thank you. Thank you. And please know that you are one of my mentors, that you are an inspiration to me. Thank you okay. for everything that you do and that you pour in to artists like me, artists who are on this journey. The fact that you take the time so authentically and raw, raw and it's just, I mean, I'm a fan. I'm like, Christina's live. <laughs> I'm live. What's up, replay watches? I'll be a replay watcher sometimes if I miss it, but I'll be there. Listen, I support you. I love you. Congratulations on all of your success. I cannot wait to work with you. I know, I One know. Day. One day is well, coming. Okay, we're going to do something, but... Yeah. I mean, listen, what you give back, what you do, what you give to this community, what you do for us artists and for yourself, because I know that it's also rewarding for you, this give back, this this act of service. So I thank you. I thank you for all that you do. And I cannot wait to see all the things that you're going to do. And I can't wait. I'm watching Snowfall tonight. I'm not waiting for my husband. <laughs> Won't watch it. Did <laughs> you fair so near? I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes just having fun because that's, yes. what, that's what it's about y'all have fun i know it's work i know it's show business and there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle but please have fun in the process because we are blessed to do this thing yes. i just love it so much yes. so stay encouraged everyone if you miss any part of the booking magnet magic series you can catch up at any time um so many great interviews so much inspiration to feed your soul we'll see you next time Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.